Uh, from fungus to nymphomania. Uh, Good. Uh, contronyms. Do you know what a, uh, a contronym is? That's a, the nym, because nymphomania contra. is about nyms, which so is about words. Contra, is it the opposite? Like a... Yes, yeah. Mm. So it's a, a word that has its own antonym. Um, so so it's, like... it, it, it has opposite meanings. So it's the same word that has opposite meanings. Uh, like? Like um, fast, because you can be moving very fast or you can be stuck fast as well. So it means to both move and not oh. to move. Um, there's a, a word like bound is kind of similar. You can be bound to something but, and not moving bounding. and bound somewhere mm. as well. There, there's, there's hundreds of contronyms and they're kind of really bizarre when you, when you think about it, how a word would mean opposite things. Oh, we but should give me forewarning about this. I could think contronyms. of some. Because when you're on the spot, it's hard to think of them. Yeah, but I mean, that's the wonderful thing about language, you know, that the context can be completely, you know, can change the meaning of the word. Like the word sanction, you can sanction a behaviour, which means that you approve of it, or you can sanction someone, which means you don't approve of it. So one word can confuse people if used in the wrong context. What about new language? You know how, I mean, it's a tendency by younger generations to use words in the opposite way, like sick. Right, yes. You know. Sick yeah. obviously means you feel crap, um, but obviously it's also fantastic exactly. in young people's language. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's probably a, an example of an antonym. And Lynn Stone is going to join me as well because there's words that she says. You mean says, a contronym? Uh, contronym, yes. Like awful, yeah. that used to be great. Yes. Well, awful used to be, you know, awe, full of awe. Full and of now awe, it's yeah. like it's completely the opposite. So yeah. words have become their opposite quite often through language. So contronyms after four... We always begin Wednesday with another one of my favourite segments, and it's so good it does now have its own intro. It's this one. Join the club of Nymphomania. Nymphomania is a segment about nymphs. So basically a segment about words, because words are endlessly fascinating. They're changing all the time. Uh, you know, they become part of slang. They, they change meaning a lot. Uh, and today for Nymphomania, I'm going to talk about words that not only have changed their meaning, they can actually mean the opposite of each other. It's a nym called a contronym. And a contronym is a word that are their own antonyms. They can also be called autoantonyms or antagonyms, I believe. Uh, I'll give you an example of a, um, of a contronym at work. Uh, here's one. Because of the agency's oversight... The corporation's behaviour was sanctioned. Now, sanction there is a contronym because does that mean that the corporation's behaviour has been, well, they've been told to pull their heads in or does that mean that they've been told to continue that behaviour? So sanction is a contronym, could mean completely different things, opposite things in the same sentence. To help me talk about contronyms, and I should say, if you have an example of one, if you can think of one, one three hundred triple two eight nine one, or you can SMS me directly on zero four six seven nine double two eight nine one to help explore the wonderful weird world of contronyms. I'm joined by linguist Lynn Stone. Welcome, Lynn. Thank you, Jules. How are you going? Good. You know what? When I first heard of a contronym, I was fascinated because I, because there are so well, there there are many of them, but we just don't realise that their words can be completely opposite. Well, also, did you realise that when you talked about sanctions there, you used the word oversight? Mm. And that in itself is a contronym. In what way? Well, you can oversee something, and that means look after it, mm. or you can miss something. Oh, that was a terrible oversight on my part. <laughs> See, this is, this, is, this is where you go down the rabbit hole with words, don't you? Be be <laughs> you certainly can. Because there are obvious contronyms, you know, like, um, like seed. You know that if you seed the lawn, you add seeds, but if you seed a tomato, you take them out. So, Well, that's related to dusting as well, isn't it? Because you can take dust off mm. by dusting something, but you can also dust for fingerprints in which you're actually placing dust. Onto a surface. Oh, yeah, like crop dusting as well. Yeah. So you're dusting something and dusting the other way is to remove things. It's Amazing. What, I mean, before we get into a list of well-known contronyms, Lynn Stone, I mean, why do words, you know, have opposite meanings? How, how does that even happen, do you think? Well, language changes over time. And there are two ways, really, in which contronyms evolve. One of them is that uh, different, two different words that sounded similar converged and so they've got different you know stories and different origins but then they converge to be another word um but uh, sometimes words you know like awesome or sick or bad um just acquired their opposite meaning through 
possibly sarcastic devices, and then those became um, accepted as the, the actual meaning. When it, it, they evolved as their opposite. I was just talking with uh, Sonia, the pre- previous a presenter and she brought up that like the the whole idea of sick you know fully sick as you yeah. know sick was something that was unwell and obviously undesirable and now it's kind of through sarcasm and slang it's become something that's quite good yes my daughter said it to me the other day i said something some very good news you know we're going out to dinner or something like that and she said sick and i was still taken aback um you know so you you you, you have your vocabulary and what you're used to and uh Six not in mine, I'm afraid. <laughs> well, another one, I think, a, a slang word, a slang you know, use of the word that's become its own contronym now is flog. Uh, because yeah. flog is was, you know, punishing things, whipping things, you know, and was, was, you know, associated, I guess, with the 17th century. But now you kind of flog a book, which means you yeah. promote something. But does that mean you're whipping your audience for attention? Mm. <laughs> or you're even, uh, you know, Beating that book, um, you know, with, with your with your accolades, it could actually mean the same thing. So, I the jury's out on flog for me. Okay, all right. So, give me some of your favourite contronyms, Lynn Stone. Well, my dad's visiting at the moment from Scotland, mm. and um, I, I told him that I was doing this segment, and he said, "Well, in Scotland, we do say pure dead brilliant." And uh, even though that's a phrase and not a, a word in itself. That there's, there's, a, there's a contronymic uh, aspect to that, pure, dead, brilliant. Um, so there's, there's one of my favourites. I'll always bring in a Scottish thing for you. <laughs> yes. um, he also said to infinity and beyond, which I thought was very well done. Um, but uh, look, some of my favourites are, uh, are off. I like off because you can set an alarm off, mm. um, you know, or, or, uh, you, or you can put an alarm off. That is, it, it goes on and you switch it off, but a bomb goes off which means it goes on. I yeah, love that. This is bizarre. And I was reading some sites dedicated to contronyms, Lynn, and a word like out, uh, you mentioned off, because small words can mean completely mm. the opposite things, because out can mean visible or invisible. Uh, and the example they give, it's a good thing the full moon was out when the lights went out. <laughs> well, that's, yes, those small words, you know, they have most, they, they have the most entries in the dictionary. So if you look up the word up, for instance, there are so many definitions of the word up. And that's one of the features of those, 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 those tiny words. They carry many, many different um, definitions, which is a, a whole thing in itself. Uh, can you have contronyms in writing? Because one is uh, resign. So if you yeah. see resign written, you can resign from work or resign with work. Yeah. So, so is that a contronym or is that well, it, something it, different? It, 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 it's a phonological contronym in in that um, the, t- the sounds of the two words are different. The two words are different, and they also happen when you do pronounce them differently. They happen to be antonyms as well. So a, a non-example of that would be a word like refuse and refuse. Mm. Now they don't; uh, they're not opposites of one another, but they have two different meanings depending on syllable emphasis. But yes, you do get pronunciation that will make contronyms out of some words. It seems like contronyms are often, you know, like things like movement have a lot of contronyms attached to it, like uh, words yes. like, you know, being fast or going somewhere fast and being stuck fast. Yeah, absolutely. Verbs tend to be the largest group of contronyms. Yeah. You've got things like buckle as mm. well. So you can secure something uh, by buckling it in, but you can also bend uh, to, to the point where you're undergoing destruction. So that there's buckle and then there's cleave. Everybody talks about cleave when they talk about contronyms. Yeah, what's cleave? Well, cleave is either um, sticking to something very, very closely, so he cleaved onto me and that sort of thing, or he cutting something in two. Okay, right. And Because yeah. other words in, in that motion v- bracket are bound, because you can be bound for somewhere or bound to a post, for instance, mm-hmm. and also bolt. You know, you can bolt something down yeah. so it doesn't move, or you can bolt somewhere very, very quickly. So and related this... to that is fix as well. Fix? In what way? Well, you can fix something um, and, uh, and, and you can make it um, you know, new again. Yeah, you, you can fix it up. Um, but, um, but also if, if, uh, if something is like a fixed definition, it's unalterable. Oh, right. It's, I mean, so our brain is making these distinctions all the time, Lynn. This is where language, when you really delve into it, it is in many ways irrational, isn't it? No, I'll never say that. I'll never, <laughs> <laughs> I'll never say that. I, I think just language changes and it changes by use. And sometimes one connotation becomes another. And that's about this, you know, sort of exponential growth of words, which is wonderful. 
And other one is screen. Because screen is something you can present something to someone so you can screen. And and in sport, you know, when you screen, you're actually concealing things. You know, you're yeah. preventing someone from seeing something. So, yeah, it, it's the, the just endlessly fascinating as a contronym, Lynn. I love trim as well. So you can you, you can trim by cutting pieces off, um, but you can also add pieces. And, you know, I'm going to trim the chicken or I've got some lovely trim on this dress. Um, uh, I love that. And clip as well. So you can clasp things together with a paper clip but you can cut things like when you're editing uh contronyms lynn uh we can go down a rabbit hole here uh <laughs> but, but it, there's so much fun uh we literally can jewels that's one of my favorite ones uh, literally literally why is that a contronym well the traditional definition is that it actually happened so i am literally um, I'm lit. I was literally asleep. That means I was actually asleep. Or you can say I literally exploded, and of course you didn't. You mean figuratively, but it's, right. it's, it's become an accepted contronym now. Uh, and you were saying to JTM, uh, my producer, that awful is a contronym. Yes, or anything with awe in it, because awe used to be a feeling of fear. Mm. So if you're awestruck by something, you're you're, you're basically incapacitated by the the, the greatness or the or the you know the, the the terrifying aspect of it. But uh, when we used to use awesome, we meant we were scared of it. And now we mean we love it. Right. Same with awful as well. Um, uh, SMSs that are coming in. I'm not sure if this is a contronym. Someone said clap, a pause or a pause or an STI. I mean, I guess oh, they, they are slightly different. <laughs> uh, uh, we're going down the dirt track. Right? Yeah, pound. The money, the the weight, someone says. or I'm, I'm not sure what that would mean. Anyway, sorry, there's that one. A peerage is someone that people have said, like peer mm -hmm. as being yeah. equal and peerage yep. as being like an aristocratic Higher. type of yeah. term. Yep, that's true. Yep, a, a, a group of your peers are people who are supposed to be your equals. Um, but if you have a peerage, you're uh, elevated in society. Uh, Lynn Stone, it's a fascinating discussion. The word of contronyms, the world, I should say. Thank you so much for joining me. <laughs> My pleasure, Jules. Uh, that's uh, Lynn Stone, a linguist. We've been talking uh, about contronyms, uh, 0467 922891. If you've been able to think of one, they are actually very, very difficult to think of. But when you, when, when you actually realise that a word is a contronym, it becomes a lot more fascinating. I'll, I'll leave you with one more, which is weather of course, which is to withstand or, you know, safely come through something, or it can also mean to be worn away. So you can weather the storm, or your house could be weathered by the storm. So they are fascinating. Language uh, is endlessly fascinating.